Hi, this is Rajin and Finland, and today we're taking a look at how to use zebras with the Sony ZV-1 to expose your videos correctly. And for the impatient ones, whether you're using profiles like PP1, I'm using right now, or SLOG2 or SLOG3, you just need to use one of the two custom zebra settings, set it as standard range, 70% plus minus 5, and let's make sure that your skin and your face is exposed around there, as you can see right now. And you're fine. Now for some more details, we're gonna take a look at what zebras are, how to find them in the menus of the Sony ZV-1, then how to make them accessibly easily in the Sony ZV-1, and lastly, how to use the zebras to expose your videos correctly, especially for skin tones. So what are zebras? Zebras is a tool that highlights within the frame a certain exposure level. These exposure levels are measured in IRE, which stands for something that I'm gonna put here right now. And it goes from zero, which means totally black, underexposed, to 100, totally white, totally white and overexposed. And then everything else is somewhere in the between. Now we need to decide where do we put different things in the frame so that things look good. And usually the priority is on skin tones and the faces of the talent, even if that means a blown up window or some really dark shadows. If people look good, everything else will be okay. There are two ways to use zebras. One is to set a limit and then everything that is above that limit will show the zebras in the frame. And the other one is to set a range, which basically you select a middle point of a range within the exposure level, a range around it, and everything that is between these values is highlighted in zebras. And usually that's what we use when we're trying to expose for skin tones. Now let me show you the setup I have here and we're going to take a look at how to find these things in the menus. So here we have the ZB1. I have the Olympus filming the ZB1 so I can show you where to find the things. We need to turn off this recording by ZB1. So if you go into the menu, then in the menu there is page number seven under this camera number two. And in the page seven, which is called display auto review, you have zebra setting. Within zebra setting, there are two more options. One is zebra display that can be either on or off. So it's just turning it on or off. And then zebra level where you can set more details. Within the zebra level, you have some presets that go from 70 up to 100. And each one of these is one of those ranges that I was describing a moment ago. Then you have 100 plus, which basically will show zebra values whenever something is totally overexposed. And then you have two custom menus here or custom settings. I have usually set them so that my C2 is this lower limit plus 95, which means that anything at 95% or above will show the zebras. And that's for me to protect highlights for sure. So let's take a look at how do we break this. Now we have the zebras turned on, as you can see. Well, actually, you can't see it, but now I'm gonna show it to you. Let's turn the ISO up and up and up. And now you can see that all of this here is above 95% IRE, which means that it's heavily overexposed. If I turn this down now, I know that I'm not overexposing, but is this exposed correctly or not? That's what we don't know. And that's when we're gonna use the other C2. Before getting into that one though, how to get them easily accessible in the ZV-1. The Sony ZV-1 and many other Sony cameras have this quick menu that is accessible via this FN button here. And you can see that I have my zebras options here, both the zebra display to turn it on and off, and then the zebra level to choose whatever zebra level I want. The question is how to get these things into that menu. And that's done this way. You go into the actual menu, again, still in the camera two. Now we're going to the page number eight, function menu set, and then you have two menus here. This one, which is for pictures, and this one, which is for video and then how to set those things. So basically you just go to whichever of these places you want to set something, click on it, and then you need to find the zebras, which are on page nine. 
and you can see that we have zero display and zero level as we have them. So at least that's how I have them and I have them here. There we go. And now that we have learned what zebras are, how to find them in the menus of the zip one and how to put them really accessible in the quick menu, let's take a look at how to use them to expose properly. I'll start recording right now with the zip one again. And now let me show you that we are in picture profile one. I showed you a moment ago how to not overexpose by using this C2 in my case. And now I change it to C1. By the way, I'm just using the rotating dial in the back to go through the options that are selected in the quick menu. And now C1, I have it at 70 plus minus five as we discussed earlier. And now you can see that the zero levels are appearing on my face, at least some of it. This is telling me that actually the image is pretty well exposed. And let me now show you this image here. And let's show the waveform within the venture resolve where you'll see that the blob that my head is, it's where it's supposed to be. This means that now I know it because I've done it a few times that this part of my face is obviously uh, darker and a bit underexposed. The bits here, you can see that they do not have that zero, which means they are a little bit overexposed but these parts here are about 70%. That tells me that this is a fairly balanced image. If I were to play with the aperture and make it darker, you can see that this side of my face gets even darker, but I get more zebras there and more, and now they're starting to disappear, which means that even this part of my face is underexposed. If we go to the other extreme, this is over the zebra levels. Now this part is heavily overexposed and more and more and we can get, I suppose, zebras on the other side by playing with the ISO maybe. Now this is totally blown out. So let's go back. There we go, properly exposed image by using zebras. Now, how to do this with S-Log2 and S-Log3? So, uh, we'll go to S-Log2. PP7 is my S-Log2. I will keep this 70 plus minus five, because I know it works well. Now let's adjust a bit the exposure. So the zebras are where they are supposed to. And as you can see, there's plenty of zebras on my face. It's a strange way to phrase things, but that's what it is, which means that this image is well exposed. You might think this looks way brighter than the other one did, both in the monitor of the CV1, the image that I'm showing you right now, totally ungraded, or what's visible within the Olympus. And that's true. The S-lock curve does some magic, which I will not get into, that actually turns what's supposed to be a 70% exposure down to 50, which means that to get the 70 in the final result, you should expose to 50. But because lock profiles like or require that we overexpose things, then that's why we push it above. And that's why we put it this way. And now let's get into Resolve for a moment. And let me show you that now this image, which is properly exposed in s 2 for skin tones, if I apply my color grading, I need to lower the exposure, but this looks good and I'm not introducing any funky noise in the shadows. So there we go. We know how to expose for skin tones using both s lock or non lock profiles. We took a look on how to not clip the image as well using zebras and that's about it. So let's go back to the so-called ACOM and hopefully we learn something about the ZV1 using the Olympus and a few zeros up and down. Hopefully this was useful. If you have some questions please let me know down below and like and subscribe if you did like the video and we're gonna see you soon for some more content.